Hello again, Ian Stokey with Mastermind Games here, back into the wonderful world of Warhammer 40,000 with Honor Guard, Ultramarine Blue from uh, War Paints, Army Painters brand. And these guys are exactly what they sound like in game. Their job is to keep named characters and more powerful models in the in play by taking bullets for them. They're equipped with power axes and bolt guns. They might have uh, improved versions of those weapons. Now, I only have uh, two problems with this kit. First off, this is fine cast resin, which is a little more difficult to clean than plastic. But also, you can't really shock harden it very well without breaking it, so these uh, slightly bent axes are kind of stuck that way. But the other... They do look nice, though, and there's plenty of detail. This is just great on that. But the other is that this uh, kit has exclusively Ultramarine's iconography. Well, that's not a problem for me since that's the army I do. They would require substantial modification for, say, Imperial Fists or White Scars players. That said, I think I mentioned this last video, there seems to be a shortage of upgrade kits for the Oh, let's work on it before I'm getting a little tired. Other Space Marine sub factions. I think there's a White Scars Biker upgrade. I know there's an Iron Hands upgrade and an Ultramarines upgrade, but I didn't see anything for Raven Guard, Imperial Fists, or White Scars. As founding chapters, those should at very, the very least have an upgrade kit. Even Black Templars and, what's the other one, Crimson Fists have upgrade kits, which, just saying, be a little more fair to the other. As much as I love the Ultramarines, DW should be a little more fair to some of their other chapters. And I didn't talk about the Blood Angels, Dark Angels, Space Wolves, because... I know they have their upgrade kits and even their own special codexes and even full box units with the iconography. But these particular marines have so many honors all over them that it obscures quite a bit of the armor underneath. In fact, there's not really any place to put the faction symbol on the shoulder pauldron, but there's plenty of other Ultramarines iconography here. In fact, the, this is almost too busy in terms of the detail. But there's even more detailed models coming up. I'll let you take a guess what that is. So... Uh, if you have seen, if the Emperor had a text-to-speech device, you might have stumbled across a little web series called Behemoth about the First Tyrannic War from the point of view of a highly over-caffeinated version of Inquisitor Kripman. With the usual text-to-speech verse, Tom Foolery. That's pretty good. A little more on the backpack. Let that dry, and hit all the colors in a bit. Okay, next up, Deep Red 09002. There it is. 
And this time it's not just for purity seals. trying to make certain I don't miss anything before moving on. Okay, I think that's all of them for him. I've not seen this many purity seals on a single model before. Stormy Gray The bend in the resin here is really noticeable on the axes, or power axes, it's just pretty horrible. As I said, I can't really shock harden this without snapping the resin. Okay, let's see. Got the axe, got his grenades, got his bolt gun. today up in arms over Fallout 76, which is apparently a big glitchy mess. I haven't played new video games since PlayStation 2 era because of the ever-escalating costs, but I do keep my eye on the industry in case something comes up that makes me change my mind about video games. And Fallout 76 is obviously not that one amazing game that makes me change my mind, but... 
Apparently there is a consistent glitch that when it disconnects you from the server, it strips your character down to his or her underwear. So, just imagine, if in a tabletop game of Warhammer 40,000, you rolled ones on an armor save, and your Deftus Custodes wound up in thongs. <sighs> Yeah. Oh boy, the day has barely begun already. My trainer thought it's gone off a deep end. Oh, he's got another purity seal tucked under his armpit. That's odd choice of location. Huh. Must be the Astartes equivalent to deodorant. But. Yellowed Bone 09143. Well, I suppose that raises the question, wouldn't the Stardies even care about deodorant? I'm gonna guess no one in the Imperium cares about deodorant. Outside of maybe rogue traders. Some kind of look more like scrolls than grenades. Like I said, there is no shortage of detail on these guys, but as I also said, it's almost too busy. It'll definitely look impressive by the time I'm finished. This minute, I am tempted to write menus on these uh, shoulder parchments. I probably won't in the end, but it's a funny idea. Then again, the idea of doing a Space Marines chapter based off Fred Flintstone popped into my head at work the other day. Yeah, I get a lot of bad ideas at work. But just imagine, the drop pods crash, Astartes in orange and black get out, their will resolute, their bolters leveled, rushing on the enemy with the battle cry of Yabba Dabba Do. <laughs> okay. Try to make sure I don't miss anything before I move on to the next color. Okay, I think I'm all right. Zero nine two zero six tarnished steel. only going on the blade of the power axes and I'll be picking out those the iconography in gold once this is dried. The gold will be the last color I do because it's on the top of everything else. As I said there are so many tiny little details all over these guys. And don't get me wrong, those tiny little details are great. But I'm going to see a model that looks really insanely busy in two videos. But Yeah. 
And finishing up this clip with 09062 Leather White. Need a fair bit of it. This is going on capes. And ring a cape just has to be a complete status thing as far as I can tell. Careful around the foot there. Okay, now that just needs to drive before I do the gold. Okay, last base coat. Gotta turn my speaker down to get the feedback. Okay. 09050 antique gold. What overly caffeinated Crippen says is the uh, bird beak or something along those lines. Again, that's from a web series parodying Behemoth or High Fleet Behemoth and in Grand Inquisitor, or was it? It's Inquisitor, War, Inquisitor Lord Crippen. Oh boy. I am really, really tired today. YouTube is a buzz with rumors that Calgar is going to be a dreadnought. We'll see what happens there.
but just as long as you can still use the regular version in organized play, I'll be fine with it. Actually, there's a lot of other characters from Warhammer that are technically dead. That'd be awesome. Such as... Uh, Captain Corland, the Imperial Fists from the Beast Arises series. Or a sod wire, aka Beast Cruel, from the same series. I missed a purity seal somehow, that's irritating. I don't feel the need on these guys to try to force through the Ultramarine's iconography because there is already plenty of it on here. There's so many details on here, my biggest concern is missing something critical. Oh, I think that's got everything on the front of the model. Let's see. A little insignia on the bolt gun. And how about that skull on his gauntlet? And on his backpack, those are gauntlet. And let's make sure I'm on camera for this crying out loud. It defeats the purpose if uh, he can't see what I'm if you can't see what I'm doing. I don't know what I could write there, but I'll figure something out by the time I finish. Get the that flash actually. I'm uncertain. All right, well, whatever. It's painted now, so I can roll with that. Okay, anything else before I move on to the other one? No, not looking like it, so... Let's touch up on the mask there. Pick him up again in a bit and get that parchment I missed. I've had these guys for a while. Just got a huge, huge backlog in my painting queue, which I'm finally starting to see the end of. So. and lots and lots of gold here. And again, no shortage of Ultramarine's iconography. that uh, GW should at least consider either alternate iconography sculpts for these guys or at the very least more upgrade kits to do some of the other at least founding chapters. Or first founding would be a little more accurate if I think about it. Is that everything on the front? I think so. Again, no shortage of tiny little details here. The thing about the uh, rule that lets these guys intercept hits is it doesn't have to be a ranged hit. These guys can take melee hits too, according to the rules. It says any time a character loses a wound, they can attempt to intercept and take a mortal wound to block that for them. Tiny little skull here, and I'll go ahead and pick out this plate too. 
belt buckle and touch up down there a tad here and okay I think I'm done I'll touch up that one purity seal uh, parchment I missed on the other guy but that's base coat so I can, I'm gonna go into shade once that's completely dry all right starting the shading with 09049 ancient bronze And I did some other touch-ups off camera, including making part of the, well, the only part of the body glove that's showing underneath the elbow here. about half paint, half water to thin it out correctly. Applying the shading goes a bit quicker than the base coats in general anyway, but the drying time is longer so you're going to be waiting quite a bit so speaking this is a water-based paint so it will dry more rapidly than say an oil-based one but I did have a friend who used to paint her maze with oil paints it took forever for her to do a single one just because of the extended drying time of oil versus acrylic. That is something to note. Okay, yeah, that's, he's good. exactly enough paint to do the job properly. can I get? Well, can't get anything else right this minute. That gold's touching way too many other colors, so just have to let that dry and move on. Okay. 09001 red brick.
It's all right. And I just noticed I missed another bit of parchment. Oh boy, all right. All right, I'll fix it. Seem to be having bad luck with missing stuff on these models. But it looks like, based on a uh, newsletter from Games Workshop's community, that uh, the this trailer everyone's talking about is actually Marius Calgar getting upgraded to a Primaris Marine somehow. That's something. Okay. And then 09061 Linen White. Okay, however my previous comments on having uh, dead characters put back into the available in the game still stands. Okay, in fact there's an Inquisitor from uh, the Magos, that particular book, the guy in the, I can't remember his name, the guy, it's basically a brain in a box. That could be particularly interesting, okay, let that dry and move on a bit. Okay, still getting used to certain features of this camera. Black and Steel 09205. You've seen some of my first videos. There's an oh boy, arguable to tell if it's more ear splitting or more skull splitting reverberation on some of them, which I found out later was caused by the speakers on my computer being turned up too loud while I was recording. Stained Ivory, 09142. So, okay. Well, big reveal on Calgary's is he's going in Primaris. My question is how? 
how what is the functionality or not the how did they pull that off upgrading an existing space marine I almost touched what I just painted oh boy I realized I forgot the parity seal on the gun. Okay, there. Now it's fixed. Yeah, and apparently there's a new book coming out. Can't remember the title of it. But if you pre order, you get a bookmark that looks like a purity seal. That's. Kind of neat, but it's not that neat, at least not to me anyway. And since this parchment's so big, I'll experiment a bit with more outlandish writing. But for now, pure black is 09037. Just two colors left to shade this and the. Oh, that's why my power is skewed. Just this and the blue. When using solid black as a shader, use extra water or else it'll get too dark and completely blot out the details you're supposed to accentuate this. In fact, this here is almost too dark, so a little more water to that out a little more before hitting the elbow and the bolt right or bolt gun. Bolt rifle is a completely different weapon now. Oh and this honor guard has some grenades visible. wet during this. It does not have grenades visible. And these do have smaller bases than the conventional space marines. That is just what they came with. So, if Games Workshop's not going to care that much about base consistency, then I'm not going to care that much about it either. Okay, that's good. That just leaves the blue itself back in a bit. Okay, last shade. Ultramarine Shadow 09187. There we go. And here. Oh boy. Got a bit of a mess behind the camera here. Like immediately behind, I got so many paints out that uh, <laughs> right. again about half paint, half water. And just going over the blue, being careful to avoid. The, uh, gray in the elbow and quite frankly anywhere else but there's not as much of this on as on many of the other ultramarines I've done just because so much more is concealed by that voluminous cape he's wearing the way 
waste by the purity seals. I'll just go ahead and yeah, I better do the feet dead last just to be safe. Carefully trying to get the shade in between that gold area right there. It's not easy though, not without nicking the gold, but it'll be okay. I'm watching a playthrough of that new Mechanicus game. I'm getting really tempted to looking at getting that and Inquisitor Martyr. But we'll just see. Because I think given the choice between getting an amazing new Warhammer video crap. Warhammer video game or an amazing new Warhammer model. I think I'd end up going for the model every time. portion of his left arm is covered up by that parchment on his shoulder. Why? Because the Imperium loves parchment. Really careful not to nick the cape. That's halfway done. After this dries, I'll have to do the uh, gun barrels on the bolt guns and get the lighting effects ready, mostly for the eyes and the power weapons, the axes here. careful around the gold and every other color quite frankly. This forearm first. Being careful not to nick the purity seal. Looks like some of this is leaked onto the shoulder already, which is fine because it was going there anyway. Even got into some of the recesses I was gonna likely have trouble with, so yay. Got right there, but that's okay, that should come out when I highlight. Flip back to the front. Carefully get the forearm around the elbow, not nicking the elbow or trying to avoid that at least. And feet and legs. Okay, once that's dry, I can get the lighting effects set up and then uh, finish that up and start the highlights and details. Okay, time to prep the lighting effects with Pure White 09039. Let's 
making a very fine brush. Got way too many. I'm trying to get the last of my ultramarines painted at once. I've got probably way too many paints uh, strewn about. Just a little bit of pure black, 09037. I do the actual lighting effects. Okay, lighting effects. 09101 ruby red for the eyes. It's a tiny dot to go far. This is going to require more water than typical. And then off camera, I put a little white in on the axe blade, kind of in front of the iconography there. We'll see why in a minute. Get that thinned out nice and proper. Head in. And then sparkling blue 09104 the power weapons this is clogged so I keep paper clips handy so I have one that's still pointy enough to work with oh my oh, that might do it so it won't Technical difficulties. <laughs> okay. We just bit the bullet and done this first, but Go this way. Okay, finally, sheesh. Little dot, plenty of water. I've done this with other power weapons before. That little bit of blue right there, and there, and then the second to kind of shade along the blade. Not doing the entire 
axe blade just the leading edge of it. Where I see it, the disruptor field being channeled through the generator, from the generator through the cabling, and through the iconography there. Okay, that's lighting effects. Once it's dried completely, I can highlight detail and finish up. Okay, 09089 cloudy gray for a highlight. I'm going to dry brush. So take a uh, somewhat beat up brush. And then rub your paint out on a paper towel until it looks like there's nothing left. And apply. This will catch on the raised areas. This is going on the power axis handle, at least part of it. The bolt gun, grenades, and the body glove underneath the armor. Though only one Marine actually has his grenades visible. This one's really choked up on his axe. Draw your brush thoroughly between uh, coats there. True Silver 09207. Just need a bit of that for the axe blades. Uh oh. So, with the new Marnius Calgar inbound, there's also a lot of talk about, well, complaining mostly about how Space Marines always get new stuff, but some factions get ignored, especially Chaos, apparently. And I have to agree that there's a couple of Chaos units, or Chaos Space Marines specifically, the Havocs and uh, noise marines, in my opinion, that could probably use a new scu well, sculpting, re-sculpting. So this just leaves a bit of that blue, that glowing blue back there. Gets the impression that there's a actual power running through that. switch out my brushes to give that time to dry off a little more thoroughly for the ultramarine highlight 0919 or no 09189 <laughs> and since it's straight paint it dries very quickly almost but not quite instantaneously Highlighting, I'm more concerned with the most readily visible surfaces. Trying to avoid the gold areas on that arm right now. Let's see if we can get this a little closer. We'll focus out 
Oh, hey, yeah, it'll focus a little closer. That's good. This is only the second or third video I've done with this new camera, so I'm still getting used to what it can do. So this means I can get fairly close, which actually helps me as well in terms of getting the details. that said, since I do have a new camera, I may go ahead and uh, redo certain older videos. In other words, uh, things I have duplicate, I will be getting duplicates of, like Tactical Marines or Orc Boys, could end up getting a new video. Maybe. I haven't completely decided if I want to go down that path yet or not, but it's a possibility. Just put down in the comments if you want to see uh, me redo some older videos with the new camera. And I will take it under consideration. Let's see which one next. Probably... Blood Red 09003. Getting wax and those, uh, I'm not sure what to call them. I guess armor skirt is the best uh, word I'm going to be able to think of right this minute. Switch brushes again and take new gold zero nine zero five one. There's plenty of this on both of these battle brothers. Lightly dusting each affected area. And a quick way to do touch ups in this step is to use more straight paint, less, um, also, we're not dry brushing so much as just using straight paint to just dab like right here. Speaking of chaos, so if you've seen my other videos, you'll know I already have some Death Guard. And I eventually want to branch out into Thousand Suns and Chaos Space Marines. Right now, I'm thinking of Black Legion, but I might do kind of a Fruity Pebbles Black Legion where I show off alternate color schemes shifting into black. We'll see, that's still a uh, ways off. I want to focus on maximizing the uh, units I already have. 
before I move on to uh, new stuff. Not just new factions, but in uh, new stuff of the factions I already have, which will mean, I think I mentioned this either in this video or earlier video, uh, Tactical Marine Kit to max out uh, Devastators, as well as another Devastator Kit, so I can do all last Cannons and all Plasma Cannons. And then a unit of Intercessors, or no, Inceptors. Get that squad maxed out for orcs. You can eat about 30 boys, 10 Gretchen, 10 Burna boys. I think that'll max out the units I've got. Have to double check. And for Tau, got a squad of crew carnivores to max out. And uh, still playing around with battle suits there. Okay, that's the gold. The blue, so that leaves the ivory. We'll do that next. Creamy ivory, 09144. Get the parchment all dolled up. Go ahead and swap out brushes again. This is just so that the brushes I've been using have a chance to dry out thoroughly a little better without slowing me down too much. You only have one set of brushes, so you're just going to have to wait a little longer, but I've got a whole big old case of them over here off camera. And I don't have a clue what I'm going to write on this yet, but I'm going to figure that out while I wait for this to dry. Because that's going to be detail. I missed this purity seal, so just a quick touch up. It's all the parchment on that marine. And again, these guys are not going to be getting the uh, iconography details as typical because they already have so much on them already that is ultramarine specific. But I still have to figure out stuff to write on the parchments and the um, plaques. Just got one color left. Switch out to a, another brush that's a little bigger, and that's going to be Ghost White 09063. Will play nice and give me enough paint anyway. Using a slightly bigger brush than the last because I can go a little more loose, well, a lot more loose on the back here. Now for squad mate. I'm still uncertain if I want to get one or one or that ah, one or more of those GW painting handles or not yet. 
seem to do okay without one, but that's something I'm still thinking about. A little more. Okay. I need to let that dry completely before finishing up. Okay, finishing up a few details with 09037 Pure Black. Taking a brush with a very fine pointy tip here. At least to start. Just some random names I plucked out of the core book. Or at least approximations thereof, anyway. Dots to dots and dashes to simulate text on the parchments, purity seals, and now, if you are actually able to write this tiny. More power to you. about the uh, rolled up parchments on his leg. Okay. Now switching over to a slightly larger brush. So where's a flat one? There's a flat one. Using a flat instead of a round brush will help this a bit. Make this go a little more quickly. So to carefully go around the edge of the base and just cover up any of the blue and white and other paint mix. Let's also give a uniform color and the black is completely arbitrary. This could be anything. A lot of my other games, I'll do a specific color for each faction or sub-faction here. Warhammer, I just do flat black all around anymore. Though I do have a pale ghostly blue-gray on some of my earlier Tau models when I first started. Okay, now once that's completely dry, I just need to do the basing. 
and then we're done. Okay, time to finish the basing. White glue, and this is stuck. All right, here we go. Probably gonna have to fill this up again soon. Since I go through so much of that, I tend to just buy the jumbo size, which is cheaper by the ounce, and then just refill the squirt bottle as necessary. So take a brush you're going to sacrifice and just mix it all up in there. The basic material out in this case, I'm using towel, a mix of a fine, medium, and coarse talus or rock debris. Okay, I'm do this. Carefully paint your glue solution around the feet of the model. And if you're using a base with a slot in it like these, then if the uh, tab for the model's feet doesn't fit into the slot neatly, then use a masking tape to fill the back fillet. Okay, and then using a different brush, just gonna push the excess off of where we don't want it. Mm, looks like I missed a little spot right there. There we go. Now for his battle brother. And this will need to sit for a bit before I seal it. Otherwise, your sealer will just push this around and not leave it a uniform. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Coat. I think it's been a long week. I'm worn out. <laughs> Brushing off that excess. Okay, now that just needs to cure for a bit before I seal it. All right, last step. Scenic cement is a spray brush on adhesive. And a glass eyedropper. Glass because this stuff will stick to plastic very easily. And just carefully drip around the base. This will the material will absorb this pretty quickly, and this will give it a rock hard finish and stop it from uh, rumbling around in your box and more or less stay where it needs to. And always clean out thoroughly to keep your tools working better or longer. And that is it. The Honor Guard from. Uh, Warhammer 40,000. So, until next time, I'm Ian Stuckey with Mastermind Games, signing out.